I had someone ask me to make a video about my solar kiln and I based it off of a publication by the Virginia Cooperative Extension of Virginia Tech. I didn't stick to their plan strictly. I did deviate from it uh, somewhat, but it's pretty much the same thing. I will leave a link to the Virginia Tech uh, publication in the description below. All right, so I'm going to go over all the dimensions, and these are all approximate. It's 12 feet wide by 8 feet. It's 11 feet tall at the tallest point. The front wall is approximately 32 inches, and the doors are 5 foot on either side, so it's a 10 foot opening. And the angle of the roof is at 45 degrees. There is flashing all the way down both sides and across the ridge cap as well all of the screws that hold the plastic panels on are rubber washered. I have an outbuilding with a breaker panel that's not too far from the kiln so I put in this outlet and then tapped off of it for the fans. There is a 12 by 8 header going across the top of the building on the inside and I added this additional piece on the outside uh, to have a place to attach the flashing to and create a little bit of a, an overhang. The vents at the top are inlet air and the vents at the bottom are exhaust air. I used full 2x4 construction to make the doors, which in hindsight was not a good idea. I did it that way so that I could insulate the doors with the same foam that I used in the walls which is the 2 inch sheet foam that you can get at the big box store. If I had to do it over again I would rip the doors down to a thinner uh, thickness so that I could use 1 inch foam on the doors instead. I used oil based flat black paint to make the kiln absorb more heat and I cut my own trim from scraps. The fans are attic fans and they are thermostatically controlled. The thermostat is set for 110 degrees and they are on a wall switch so I can turn them off when the kiln's not in use. This is the baffle and the curtain. The baffle is just held in place by some thin plywood strips and the curtain is held in place with uh, velcro straps whenever not in use. When the lumber stack is in the kiln, I will take it to the closest stack to the door, undo the curtain, and hold it in place with concrete blocks. So one thing that I want to do that I haven't done yet is to get some box steel and put them down on the floor as runners, put some eyelets in them, and that will allow me to ratchet strap the stacks down tightly to the floor and uh, should yield more stable lumber. One problem that I have had is uh, checking on the ends, um, but I always cut my lumber around 10 feet, so I have you know enough to cut off there to, to eliminate the checking. I do have some anchor seal, which I have not tried yet, and I'm gonna try that um, on the next load that I do and see how that turns out. It's basically wax, I think. Um, if you get lumber from a lumber yard that has uh, the blue or the red paint on the end of it, I think that's basically um, their formula of that, which is just wax with some dye in it from what I can tell. If you touch it, you get the color on your hand and it feels waxy. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Please like and subscribe and thanks for watching.